Oh man, Dolph Lundgren wants to release the wand cut. <laughs> Love it. Uh, plus, James Gunn gives a response to whether or not Ryan Gosling is in Superman Legacy. Also, what happens with the Superman and Batman rights expire? All that and a bunch more right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome into DC On Screen, the podcast that's been bringing you news and reviews for the DC... For the DC... Oh, God. I'm going to start all that over again. <laughs> Welcome into... <laughs> Stop. I mean, Welcome into, keep oh, the recording. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome into DC On Screen, the podcast bringing you news and reviews for the DC Universe properties on film and television since 2015. I am your slightly shaky, definitely unstable host, David C. Robertson. This is my co-host, a.k.a. my third leg, Jason Goss. I... Wow, you've given me a lot of these over the years, and that's that's one of the more stunning ones. I'm because like I'm I mean, not your you, dick, <laughs> aren't you? No, I mean, um, <laughs> presumably bigger than than six inches, but like like I wouldn't fit in there. Oh, uh, but are you okay with being my third leg, Jason? In a way, in a way, in a way, you're a hefty third leg. I am, I am. But like, you know, how how else would a stool function? You'd have to have at least three. All right, all right. So I'm, I'm I mean, just, all I know. I'm the bit of the tripod that, that you know, you just got to have, whether yeah. you fucking like it or not. I never would have thought about it, but I've literally heard people see us together and say, here comes tripod. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, Anyways. looking back does make more sense because they welcome you so warmly and openly and refuse to make contact with me. Yeah. And like, I just keep trying to get in the conversation and, and like no one looks over and pays attention. It's, it's, uh, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. Except for that one guy that you seem we're to be friends fun, with. Though. Yeah. That one guy that we were friends with, uh, he just always stares into my eyes, but rubs you. And it's really a weird situation. It, ought, it, it is. And it's, I don't feel good about it. Yeah. And I don't know why we keep hanging out by that dumpster. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to call the guy a dumpster. We, we don't even <laughs> work in restaurants really anymore. <laughs> like, we don't have to spend our time in dumpsters. It just feels like home. I know. I know. Um, there is a weird part of you, though, that if you took a smoke break and had the vague sense of dumpster smell in the background, would be like, mm -hmm. nah, this makes sense. This this completely makes I get it. Yeah. It's like uh, our version of, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't want to be too mean about it. All right. And I'm not actually trying to say anything. Well, okay. Maybe I am. Look, I'm excited because McFarlane toys put out a Batman V Superman Batman figure. There's Becky with the good hair and there's Batman with the good suit. And that's what this one is. Mm. And so, um, is this one of those things that you were grabbing or some FOMO? Oh no, I, no, no, I, it dropped at like 11 AM and I hit it immediately. And then, uh, Scott from DC Squadcast told me like, by the way, it sold out and it was like 40 minutes later or something. Oh, I so. saw that. And you were like, oh yeah, no, I, I made it. <clears throat> yeah so um like god some of those fucking action figure things are just the only thing i remember that's even close to it are like fucking concert tickets back in the day yeah they're actually so, still like, in the day right i mean they're still hard to get because they drop at a certain time oh sure there was a picture of mitch garrett's the other day the uh wonderful fucking dc artist but like yeah. he's a huge tay tay fan I saw a picture of him the other day with like five fucking screens up because they were they were dropping the uh, like the concert uh, pre order whatever the hell it was was about yeah. to hit and he was getting them damn Tay Tay tickets. Yeah, absolutely. I hope he got them. So yeah, that's that's basically what it was. I don't pre order things like ever, but this time I did it through Amazon. Um, so I should be getting it in March sometime, hopefully. And um, but I, yeah, I just it was funny to me because that. Batman B Batman V Superman Zack Snyder film action figure sold out so quickly. <laughs> and also, then like now that you've reminded me and I did see you and Scott talking like it does look sh fucking great. Yeah. Like, but 
that day I went to uh, Target and found a ba- an Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom figure for five ninety nine on clearance. Nice. <laughs> I look. I'm not saying. Okay, I am. I am saying that <laughs> something I, is wrong if the Batman v Superman figure from twenty the twenty sixteen movie action figure is selling out quickly and they can't get rid of the Aquaman stuff. Oh, you're having your uh, we're more popular than Jesus moment. Uh, maybe, maybe, but you know, I also remember when the the Snyder uh, Justice League figures came out from McFarlane. And they were legitimately hard to find, or hard to find most of them. Like to in our area, like they were at every store. They don't like linger on the shelves like you know all of the current movies have. Just something I've noticed. It's not a it's not a, a ringing indictment. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is though. I mean, there's just so much hubbub and hubbub controversy, whatever about. Yeah. Like, there's no Aqua Cult hashtag. <laughs> no. And look, I'm not saying also, I'm also not like, it's not like completely indicative of the quality of the movies. It's just. Absolutely not. I love the Aquaman the, movies. I mean, it, I don't think that the general audience cares as much as certain people do. But I will say that like the BBS, the Snyder stuff has gotten such a rabid fandom. And then like. They're grabbing this shit and I'm grabbing this shit out of love of what that was. And it feels like everybody else is looking at the, like the Aquaman stuff and going like, eh, we're not excited because it didn't go anywhere. I know. Like it's dead. <clears throat> like Warner I Brothers know. has systematically. There was not going to be a way to avoid that, but I, I, I get it. And you're right. It's just, it's funny to me that like Warner Brothers in every instance, like their biggest issue is that they just won't finish a damn thing. Like <laughs> they put, <laughs> they, it's like, oh no, there was a bad, there was a negative fan review out there. Let's retool everything. Oh, the critics didn't like it, even though it made almost a billion dollars. Well, it should have made a billion dollars. Let's retool everything. And that's like that's still what they're doing, and uh, they're paying the price for it. Like you know, with Marvel, Incredible Hulk didn't do so well. Try to do it better on the next one. Let's just move on. Just move along. <laughs> just keep making the same universe. For the love of God, Ant Man didn't make a billion dollars. Oh well, you know it's. Uh, it really can I be that know. easy though. It just can. I mean, you you don't. It doesn't have to be that much i mean i i I say that but that's that's uh that feels like creatives talking in a way not that we qualify but like that feels like more the that side of it whereas Mm -hmm. like i get how you know you're not able to tell the investors well i know that we're not the biggest best thing we didn't match this but you know but we but we just really liked the franchise it was making enough money yeah i mean i (laughs) there's an argument for that for sure but like, I think that's how the CW lasted as long as it did. No, oh, yeah. Is it, it was making enough money. It was turning a profit. It, mm-hmm. And, you know, new management came in and they want it to be a, a, a much bigger profit. And that kind of inevitability with just how publicly traded companies are that own creative mm-hmm. things is just always going to be some bullshit we deal with. Mm-hmm. That's our life, guys. I didn't mean for this to get off into this so much. So I'm just going to move on. Um <laughs> Before we, we get can, into the news. We can go further. How, how sad do you want to make we this? We can. We can. Let's go into the uh, downfalls of capitalism. B- before we get into the news, I do want to thank the patrons. We didn't do it last week. Felt a little bad. Patreon.com slash DC on screen. If you want to become one of them, you can join the community for free. You'll also get what I think are pertinent social media posts that I make from time to time. Uh, <laughs> $1 a month gets you that plus every episode ad free. That Five dollars a for month. A second. Sorry, what? That phrasing is going to kill me for a second. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what I believe is valuable input. Yeah, yeah. I said it for a reason. <laughs> Five dollars a month gets you all of that plus extra recordings, like the new episode of Comic Castaways that we just did. Uh, where we randomly selected pages out of the DC Universe Encyclopedia and wound, wound up talking about Echo, Demos, and Devastation. So, patreon.com slash DC on screen. Cool names, not great characters. Spoiler. Right, right. It really does help the show, y'all. And we we love all of you already patrons out there. 
Second, I did want to bring this up. I feel like we are, I always like leave this kind of stuff for the last of the episode when we have it. And I'm going to switch that up because I want to, I want to recognize here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a really nice review on Apple. Spider guy 15 says a plus entertainment. Dave and Jason are always great to listen to for an excellent casual conversation about the DC multiverse. I love that you share your true opinions Good and bad. I look forward to listening to you both and hearing what James Gunn has in store for the future of the DCU. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. That was... Uh, it is not often we get an Apple review. I would like to change that. If you guys want to, like, follow <laughs> Spider <laughs> Guy 15 That would definitely have to be with anyone's help. It, it was, yeah. It's not something we can change. That's, that's fantastic. It's fabulous. But, uh, yeah, and yeah, thank you very much. It, it does... Spider Guy, you have no idea how much it... Uh, boosts my day and my mood when I see stuff like that. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, likewise for Pud triple three on Twitter, who says what I truly appreciate about my dudes at DC on screen is their willingness to discuss Superman's crotch for several minutes. <laughs> I appreciate you. We are not afraid. <laughs> and uh, while I was looking at that, I was shocked, shocked to see that we have a score of 4.9 out of 40 reviews on Spotify. I thought you were going to stop at 40. We just have a score of 4.9 out of 40. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Like 40 people have given us a 4.9 on Spotify. I like it. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud. That's, that's, a, that's an excellent number. Thank you, guys. And, if, and you know what? If you want to join their ranks and help us out that way, dude, well, go over to well, our, her our a bit. Yeah, go over to our DC on screen on on your mobile app on Spotify and uh, and rate us. All right, I'm done. I'm done with that. Let's go to here. Uh, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Back to more making fun of shit. Here we go. Aquaman two star Dolph Lundgren <laughs> said that he had a his role was Weird. reduced heavily because his role was directly tied to the reduced role for Mira. Since he's playing her father, he says, I just realized that it was some kind of corporate decision that they tried to limit Amber Heard. And then I'm playing with, I'm playing her dad and went along with it. I was just disappointed for the moviegoers because I thought the original script was great. And the original cut, I saw a little bit of it. (laughs) It was really good. So I didn't see any reason to start reshooting and reshaping the story, which obviously led to disappointment in the moviegoers and not just me. Many things went into the cutting. Many things went into the bad box office. Uh, I promise a very, very small percentage of those people were upset that there was left less Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I really like his character, even the arc here. <laughs> so it's not like I didn't like Sam. I actually like Dolph Lundgren generally. He's one of those oh. people that like, I, I am typically amazed that, like, man, how are you still in that shape? It, yeah. It, and he still looks young for for how old he actually is. But because I feel like he's looked like that since the mid-80s. I, I kind of feel about Dolph Lundgren a similar way that I do to Jason Mewes, where I, like, see him. Oh, this, and I'm happy uh, to see him. I'm happy to see him. I'm happy he's still with us. I'm a little shocked that he's still with us, but I'm happy to see him. And uh, I feel like the still with us is coming from very different places <laughs> with those two that you just pulled. Uh, and no, no, kind of not. But, you know, I mean, Dolph was, you know, around in the 80s. We know what that true, was, what that true. scene was. True. Uh, oh, he couldn't live too fast. It still looked that good, though. I mean, Van Damme looks pretty damn great. He lived faster than anybody. That's true. Uh, but, you know, then a in both Jackie cases. Jackie Chan over there aging like a normal person. <laughs> And but then in both cases, you know, uh, they each open their mouths, and I go, "Oh, <laughs> why, why?" So uh, you know, mostly I'm talking about their acting ability. So it's fine, and I'm you know, I just don't, I don't think a whole lot. Like I, I feel like if they like just cast somebody else as as Dolph's character, I don't think many people would have noticed. I. I mean, I kind of would have because he's a recognizable face and like he's got a certain frame to him. But yeah. it, it, it would a little bit hard to match. I think that's the reason he's still hanging around. Yeah. Is he's he's a very striking figure. But I don't know. I it, him and Muse have something very similar. 
going on. They, when I see them on screen, they're doing what they can do. Yeah. I don't know that they couldn't do other things. I don't, for all I know, I mean, we could watch, you know, them remake the Romeo Mercutio argument for all. I don't know. But like what I've seen them do, they can do. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy with it. Fair enough. The Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom home video release date. I had no idea where you were going was... when you compared those two. That was about to be weird, I thought. <laughs> it made more <laughs> sense when you were done. <laughs> All right. So Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom will be released on digital on Tuesday, January 23rd. Uh-huh. Christ. So, <laughs> so soon. <laughs> <laughs> that is two days from when we're recording right now. Yeah. Uh, it will be available to own for twenty four ninety nine and rent in a forty eight hour window for nineteen ninety nine on participating digital platforms. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom will then be released on four K, UHD, Blu Ray, and DVD on Tuesday, March twelfth. So save your shackles, kids. I don't. All right. So let's just be clear because I'm I I watched it relatively recently compared to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I got delayed by. Uh, 103 degree internal temperatures for whatever yeah. various family member you were talking about at the time. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm still a little bit in the honeymoon phase. I, I'll, if it's coming out on the 23rd, I can download it. I'll absolutely do that. Oh, I know you will. I, I mean, it will curious. be lucky if I, if I purchase a $5 4k Blu-ray in 10 years. Yeah, you'll get it eventually. You can't help. Yourself. Oh, I will. I w- No, I will get it eventually. Absolutely. I'm just your, saying. Your persistent desire to have a completest version of physical media will take over. You're just going to hit the price point. Uh huh. <laughs> you got to wait until that's right. it's the right time to pounce. That's all. I literally only bought that Aquaman figure for the Topo. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just what it is. You know, I mean, it, Dolph, I'm sorry. I didn't need more Amber Heard. I didn't, I understood why what was there was there. And, I understand why what wasn't there wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Let's put it that way to be vague and not have to go into it. Cool. But like, Dolph, <laughs> I didn't want more Amber. I wanted more Topo. And I don't say that as a as a insight to the Amber argument. I, if, if I had to have a recut, I, w- I, w- I want a Topo cut. I, I enjoyed Topo enough, but not so much that I need another another cut. I don't want more 30 topo. more minutes. I just want about five, six. Just a, just a modest. You know what? Actually, like the um, the... Director cut of Suicide Squad with an extra like 12 and a half, 13 minutes. Mm-hmm. That'd do me. That'd do me just fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, popping over to Creature Commandos. Mm-hmm. On Sunday, uh, James Gunn confirmed, because there was a rumor, as there are, there was a rumor that um, Anya Shalotra had been cast as Circe in Creature Commandos. And James Gunn said yes when someone asked him if it was true. He said yes. He also says, and there are other cool characters in the show played by other cool actors, but all of the series regulars were announced. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which means Cersei is not going to be a major part of Creature Commandos. Yeah, yeah. She'll be a villain of the week. Uh, yeah. A uh, bit of a shame because, dear God, that's a powerful character. Mm-hmm. Or she might be the big bad villain at the end. Could be. And maybe that's why it was announced so thoroughly. Mm-hmm. Oh, it always cracks me up with like the squad of weirdos like Creature Commandos. And then there's like a goddess of magic. Like mm-hmm. an actual goddess of magic. Like, come on. If we were just doing this as like a YouTube video, real world stats thing, we, we ain't even playing. I'm going to say, of course, you you would uh, like that because that's all that Ghostbusters is. I know. I know. It's a magical goddess fighting a bunch of weirdos. Yeah. And they should have died like 12 times. They should have. Minimally, I don't know how they crawled out of that New York street with 85 pounds of backpack on. Most of them out of shape. Mm-hmm. Professors that are <laughs> lived sedentary lifestyles. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that looks like he did any real work was Egon. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Winston, I think, actually like had a real job before. Yeah, no, he was he was the one that did all the blue collar and yeah, yeah. The rest of them were just a bit dainty by some stand by like yeah. Planet Fitness kind of standards, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So Gunn reconfirmed that Henry Braham, who did Guardians Volume Three and the Suicide Squad 
is doing the cinematography for Superman Legacy. He already said that before, but people asked, and there it is. Nice. Uh, purportedly, Letterbox listed Ryan Gosling as a cast member in Superman Legacy. Someone asked Gunn about it, and he responded with an eyes rolling emoji. <laughs> so, I wouldn't mind if he just did that from now on, just until he gets things booted. It's not really <laughs> that much time, you know, when you think about it. Like, is he rolling his eyes because it got leaked, or is he rolling his eyes because it didn't happen? Well, it's a he, stupid thing. I think we talked about it before, but he recently pointed out that he can't just pluck <laughs> one thing out and say this is true or this isn't yeah. true because it implies things. Yeah. So it kind of, uh, if he just responded with emojis from now on, actually, I would that would be a great gag. I'd be into it. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right. So on January 17th, Variety released an article called When Superman and Batman Copyrights Expire in a Decade, Will It Be Kryptonite for DC? I do want to point out, one, Variety used to be reputable. Two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this article is uh, at least partially or uh Predominantly by Tatiana Siegel, mm -hmm. who is renowned for her hatred of Zack Snyder. Mm -hmm. uh, and to prove it, here we go. Uh, I'll read you a little bit of this. She writes, about a decade ago, Zack Snyder developed a storyline for the DC Extended Universe that involved Bruce Wayne impregnating Lois Lane. The subplot in which Batman cuckled Superman was poised to unfold in Justice League, with Batman dying in the sequel and Lois, Lois raising their spawn with Superman. Snyder's vision for Wonder Woman was equally unorthodox. With visuals featuring a superheroine who had brandished the decapitated heads of her conquered enemies like an ISIS jihadi. <laughs> it just... Jesus Christ. So it, it makes you want to just sit down. Like if we could just do a fireside chat thing with yeah. Variety, if if Variety was a person and we could just talk. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, I just want to check with you. <laughs> are you okay? So I just want to see if you're present right now. Because like, are you proud of what's happening? Because, yeah. you know, I, I it's, it's almost intervention style. We're like, these are the ways in which your behavior has affected my life. Yeah. She continues, Warner Brothers and DC Studios, which hold a firm grip on their intellectual property, rejected Snyder's ideas, which were deemed, quote, super creepy, according to a source familiar with the back and forth. Is this a parody? Is this, this feels like the freaking onion. I know. Uh, DK, DC, DK, DC declined to comment for this story. A representative for Snyder did not respond to a request for comment. Now, uh. No, nor should they. Right. Fuck off. And then she, 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 this is how she ends that portion. But in the next decade, artists and rival studios won't need permission to create their own take on the characters. Now, later in the article, I do want to point this out. Like, first of all, like, okay, Warner Brothers is going to be fine. They're just going to be fine. Like, you know, it's all chopped up. Like, they could use Superman, but they can't use certain costumes. They can't use certain symbols. They can't use kryptonite. They can't... All of these things will slowly drip into the public domain. Um, yeah, but, and, like, she made it sound like it was going to be just the full characters blown up and, and, you know, like, you remember the Winnie the Pooh movie where it's just a murder yes. horror film? Like, I promise you Disney's version of the Winnie the Pooh, they're still making money off of it. It's okay. <laughs> like, they... The article makes it sound like, oh, my God, what are they going to do? The whole thing is going to collapse. Like, dude, I don't know. What are you going to do with the Batman with a gun and the Superman who can jump? Yeah. And one woman who's a fucking secretary. Movies. Yeah, like, I'm good. We'll be I, fine. I will watch those versions, too. You know what else? It would be I, funny. I would actually like a new take with exactly the characters I just described. Oh, God. You know what hasn't killed the James Bond franchise? Never say never again. Yeah. That was a not co not proper copyright owned thing at a different studio. It was a different take on James Bond, but kind of the same take because it was <sighs> the original guy. Ian What's Fleming? his name? No, no, no. Like the original Bond? Yeah. Roger Moore? Yep. No. Sean Connery. Oh. Could, couldn't come up with that name for some reason. He was before, but, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in Doctor No. He was in, in several, and then like for like the knockoff James Bond, he went back and played it again. Nice. Anyway, it's not going to matter, y'all. It's not. Uh, I'm excited because we're going to get some really interesting and cool, basically funded, fully financed fan films. 
And that actually may be a good point. It may increase Warner Brothers' reliance on creativity in the production because if everyone else is doing some, you know, some wilding, so to speak, like mm-hmm. they can't just do cookie cutter films anymore. They got to actually fuck around if they're going to stay relevant. Yeah, the possibility that works in our favor as far as that goes. Yeah. Oh, it's going to work in our favor because not I mean, only will fan it, films be fun. <laughs> not only will it affect the. Not only will it bring us fan films and fan TV shows possibly. But it will also open the market up for some really cool retro action figures. <laughs> oh, God, you're right. <laughs> and statues. And they will be cheaper than you than Dude, they normally are. are. People are going to be 3D be printing this shit. And exactly, like, it's going to be deeply high-priced, specialist, boutique kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a whole market there that I'm sure a few people just have a, an absolute boner for. That, I mean, be pop over to Etsy, pop over to eBay. The yeah, the like, I can go onto eBay and I can spend sixty dollars right now, and I will get a Henry Cavill head that I actually want to put on these McFarland figures. Yeah, I retrofits or whatever, dude. Like they, they there's so many customizations and everything. It's gonna, but it's gonna be wild. Anyway. Uh, in the article, she says, DC has been preparing for this for years. At a press event in 2023, CEO James Gunn noted that the next Superman film will introduce characters from The Authority, a comic series that launched in 1999, in part because the Superman copyright is about to expire. Gunn never said that shit. Yeah. That is some bullshit she is tacking on that makes no sense. Why would you introduce the authority just because Superman, the Superman copyright is about to expire? You're not going to put any of those characters in place of Superman. I mean, no. Like, one of the current running issues that I, well, I think I wrapped it up. I, f- I forget if it's running or if I wrapped it up or if I'm in the middle of it. I can't remember. But it was a, I think Grant Morrison started in Future State. It was Superman and the authority. Mm-hmm. Like, there's some really cool characters in the authority. They're not Superman. Like, not. Yeah. I don't mean just power levels. I mean, like, none of them are the same design. I mean, there's, like, basically the Ray or basically Batman, but, like, Mm -hmm. even those are closer. Or um, what's his name that reminds me of, like, uh, Manchester Black or something. But, like, it's not (laughs) – it's not the same same. No, it's not. Um, So, yeah, someone said, uh, James, there's an article out there about Superman becoming a public domain. And the article that said you're introducing authority members in Superman Legacy because of that, is that true? Um, Gunn says no. No story decisions were made on characters becoming public domain. And I feel like there was a silent eye-rolling emoji there. There was. And I like the way you phrased that. A little bit past tense. Because it's not like Gunn has been working on this for, you know, what? Better part of two years now, maybe? Yeah. year and a half By the way, Superman goes public domain in like, 38 or something like it's something stupid like what are we talking about this for it should be 75 years i think i don't know the oh domain, yeah it is is it's in the 30s though it's the, in the 2030s yeah do, i didn't <sighs> domain types change uh depending on the actual media they're being released to mm-hmm. and then uh there's uh, we could probably do an, an entirely another like documentary style podcast about how that is mostly disney so it also cracks me up that warner brothers might have enough power to extend those themselves. But the way Gunn phrased that, though, makes sense to me. Because it's not like he was working on a story and he was just like in the middle of it. There's a whole writer's room with the stuff and some lawyer with a pamphlet of papers came in and like, you know, late 80s style barged into the room kind of movie thing mm-hmm. and said, oh, my God, you realize it's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. No, dude, they, everybody knows the dates. And it's 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 borderline irrelevant, uh, probably irrelevant, but like. It, this wasn't a surprise to anybody, nor would it be something they have to pivot to. And if it was something they had to absolutely pivot to, to keep everything safe, DC would have just made the Authority series and put Gunn in, in charge of that. Mm-hmm. It's a juicy enough medium. It, there, there's no reason they couldn't do it. Yeah. Grant Morrison fucked around enough. There's plenty to play with. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh-huh. we could just make like a series of fucking things with that. We didn't have to fuck around with DC if we were scared of stuff. That's a dumb fucking thing to say. Yeah, that's stupid. Um, look, I think it's time to go to break. You want to go to a quick break? Sounds good. Cool. We'll be right back. And we are back. Let's continue on with Superman Legacy. Rachel Brosnahan <laughs> at the Critics' Choice Awards teased a fiercely intelligent Lois Lane. 
who will honor the source material while allowing Brosnahan to put her own spin on the character. And then at, uh, speaking with Entertainment Tonight, she said Lois would be feisty and joked, dare I say marvelous. Beautiful. <laughs> she said, that I really enjoyed the- one of the happiest castings I've ever seen. Like for me. Oh yeah. That, I, I think, I think she's going to remake this character. We'll never think about it the same again. I genuinely think yeah. it's, it's that level. It was one of those where like, I have seen shit from even like the, the die hardiest Snyder fans about everybody on that cast, but her, I have not heard, like they announced her and everybody was just like, all right. Well, God damn. All right. At least that part's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty pissed about everything else, but fuck, if you're going to try it. Yeah. She said, I've really enjoyed the collaboration with James Gunn so far. Every single person involved with his production is such a perfect nerd for Superman. We all grew up watching the movies. Some of us grew up reading the comics. I feel like it's being made with so much love, and I think this Superman will have a sense of humor. I'm rolling through my brain all the things I'm not allowed to say, but we're excited to both put our spin on things and also honor this material that we all love so much. We have big shoes to fill, but we're excited to try to fill them. Uh, that, I, that all sits right with me. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well phrased. All sits right. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I already said how excited I am, but God damn. Yeah. I really am. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm super excited. She might no be so intended. good that, like, I know. Like, she might be so good that even if the, it, even if they watch the, um, uh, what do they call it? The production cut? The running cut? Anyway. Assembly cut. Assembly cut. Thank you. Uh, if, even if you watch that and you decided, oh, we fucked up the whole Superman thing, I think you're just going to be able to cut it into a Lois Lane movie. At, like, I feel like she's going to be so good that I'll be happy with that. I don't even know what they're spending the money on. I would just make a Lois Lane movie. I don't need <laughs> Superman. If she's Lois, I don't need a Superman. I'll just take a spinoff of her like starting her career, and then at the end she meets him, and I'll be fine. Yeah, that would be fine. I mean, I'd, I'd be okay It'd with that. It'd be basically the, uh, oh, what was the, what was the Mary Tyler Moore show? That that was the one with her in the newsroom, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. Take two with Rachel. We could also go the route of, you know, making the argument that like the old MCU fans used to make about DC, where it's like, I can't believe we're getting a Superman movie, but before we get a Lois Lane movie, like we have to have an individual movie to set up Perry White and Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen. They should have a movie called The Kents. Yeah. <laughs> Before it becomes Superman Legacy. Yeah. I just want a movie Otherwise, about uh, Ma and Pa Kent meeting in high school. I won't understand what the movie is if all the supporting characters don't have origin films. Yeah, yeah. The Ma and Pa Kent movie like, ends with their favorite cow on the farm dying unexpectedly. Oh, no. And, and then, oh, oh, oh. And then a week later, while they're still in mourning, something happens on the farm. <laughs> And in their sadness, they decide to adopt this stranger. Mm-hmm. And that's where the film, that's the stinger, right? Mm-hmm. Somewhere in like Lois Lane's origin story. She got an A on an essay in English. And that's the <laughs> <laughs> In junior high. <laughs> the rest of it's just her being sassy to kids on the playground. I mean, I can do it. Like, you know, army brat, doesn't connect with anyone, doesn't have any friends. But the only way she actually has figured out how to connect with other people is by writing. Oh, yeah. She, like, MySpace, MySpace style starts a blog. Or just starts, you know, school papering, but whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. True. Either way, I'm good. I'm good. And, you know, that's a good point. They always made, like, Lois Lane has never been an on-screen journalist, right? I mean, I know she's been on screen a few times, but I've never seen no, her have yeah. that as a job. She's always <clears throat> she's always I typing. They, I think they've done it. But, yeah, that, no, I think that's the way you do it. Like, you started out where she, like... She wants to write for the school paper, but she thinks kind of things are kind of messed up. Something's going on that they, the school doesn't want anybody to know about, and they won't let her write certain things. So she starts her own blog, and then like everyone stops reading the school paper and starts reading Lois's blog because that's where the real dirt is. She's uncovering the the real shit. Yeah, they threaten to expel her. It's the whole thing. You do There's that. like a time jump where she stands up in a college class and just <clears throat> berates the professor so much that it's clear she knows more than he does about the topic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like she just breaks down like Moby Dick or something, <laughs> something kind of, or um, Look, Ulysses, something really hard to digest. And she just destroys him. I was pseudo joking, but the more we're talking about it, the more I really just want this Lois movie. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, she has an antagonistic relationship with her dad. We're like, of course, she's mad that he was never as present as he 
that she would have liked, but she understands he had duties. So she does that yeah. herself in certain ways. So she can't because you know, she's, keep a relationship going because she has duties, and, you know. <clears throat> yeah, of course. and there, because she's good with words, we have to have a scene where her dad is apologizing to her and brings her some, you know, elaborate gift. And she says, I don't want your gifts, daddy. I just want your presence. <laughs> And then they fire us. <laughs> <laughs> because we made it that far into the pitch meeting before we go, well, I'll see ourselves out. Yeah. Parking validated? Is that at the do I talk to her? Is it, it was, but not now. Not, not now. Oh, is that sixty dollars? Yeah. God damn sixty dollars. Oh, okay. All right. Well thanks but, for wait, reading. Wait, 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 what if we have General Lane laugh when she says that? I believe the door's over there, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> you turn the knob to the right it'll open faster <laughs> all righty um <laughs> you know there's Anthony. a scene in here in jimmy's like origin story where mm-hmm. he like puts on a dress for a second and there's like a, a little beat where he's like hmm. you have like the uh the 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 dean dalmatian I hope this doesn't awaken something in me moment yeah <laughs> because if we're going to do this let's put in all the grant morrison knots right like and even have him ask a salesperson like you know, what, what kind of dress is this? this come in? <laughs> what, what, what kind of dress is this? Oh, that's a Morrison. Mm. 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 It's a good, good brand. Can't quite afford it. Like, oh, that uh, the brand is uh, Morrison, Morrison quietly. And uh, this is <laughs> so $500 dre- dress you're wearing. Uh, I'll say that. Mm. Granted, you can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> He'll start saving money in a chest. And, like, no one ever explains what's that for. He's just putting money in a chest. Yeah. Dude, I, I deeply love Morrison's uh, version of Jimmy Olsen. Oh, yeah. Deeply. And I would love to see that on screen at some point. Completely. So I'll say. Uh, Anthony Kerrigan talking about Metamorpho, playing Metamorpho in Superman Legacy. And uh, talking about how he's going to tackle the character. He says, well, reading the comic books and just using my imagination. <laughs> the character's never been played before, at least in real life. So I'm doing that thing where I like to draw inspiration from everywhere, throw it all into a pot and see what happens. I feel like he's being a little sarcastic. Maybe he's not, but it feels like he's answering a dumb question. Yeah. Hard to tell. And he knows it. But yes. <laughs> yeah. That interpretation. Like, I'm going to, I'm like, well, I'm going to do this thing where I use my imagination. And... <laughs> And I'll draw some inspiration. You know, what actors do. Mm. Do, you, uh, do you watch this um, Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 2 trailer that I sent you? I did. And, God, I need to catch up on that. I Yes, I agree. All right, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, though, because I know you know uh, vastly more about the animated continuity right now. Like, no, I don't. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> let's guess together, then. Because I, uh-huh. I thought you had a more cogent picture of it. But, um, if... Like, you can't just watch this movie, right? Or, I mean, I know that's part two, but... Um, I think... Hmm. I don't think... I I think it's going to be best if you watch the other Tomorrowverse movies, because that's what they've been building towards. And this is supposed to be the end of the Tomorrowverse? They don't know yet. Okay. Uh, I know it seemed like they were saying, like, it was going to be reset after Crisis on Infinite Earths. I thought I saw that, but then someone else is saying this week they don't know yet, so... Mm. I'm not really sure, but, um, so look, the Tomorrowverse stuff is just Superman, Man of Tomorrow, Justice Society, World War II, uh, whatever the Tomorrowverse ends up in when they put out the collected edition as mm-hmm. a DVD physical, it needs to be called the yesterday verse. And I will not be deterred from this thought. <laughs> Batman, the long Halloween, Green Lantern, beware my power, Legion of Superheroes, Justice League, War World and Crisis. On Infinite Earths Part One. God, those that's all. Good, those though. those they, sound so good. Yeah, I really got to catch so, up on animated. Um, that's probably going to be like something we record if we actually could do it. But no, I think we should. Uh, so what I was going to say is, we need to. I say, because look, I haven't seen Superman: Man of Tomorrow. I don't remember liking it. I have seen it, but I have not seen it since Fandom. And that was like hour three of me sitting there when it started. Yeah. I was not in a good headspace. I just wanted the shit to be over. Um, 
<laughs> was that the first fandom though? Yeah, I think so. You're probably right. My back hurted. My I don't dick think was I falling it. asleep. Yeah, no. I mean, that was eight fucking hours. Like, I don't think I watched it during fandom. I think I watched that one afterward. I, mean, I want to say I watched that one afterwards. I, I think during fandom, I kept clicking around. Like, I, probably while you were watching that, I was over there trying to figure out the mechanics of that weird Joker game that I wish I could get back to. Mm-hmm. Because, like, there was something to it, and I, and it was a little bit interesting, but I, I never got past some weird little spot and couldn't, like, continue the game. Yeah. No, like right here on the if wiki. knows where to find that, please send me a link. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it says right here in the Wikipedia page for the Tomorrowverse, it later was confirmed to the public that it would be a three-part storyline and serve as the conclusion to the Tomorrowverse with all the remaining films being scheduled to release in 2024. So, yeah, I say we do this. I say, like, uh, next week or this coming week, instead of doing a news episode, let's do Superman Man of Tomorrow and just every other week. When we, Cause there's not really enough news to do an episode sometimes and we, it'll be okay if we skip a week, if there is like, yeah, that'd be doable. We've got a, a gap in content here that uh, DC is providing us on the screen. So, yeah, and I'm happy already to done some stuff that was take advantage of it. Yeah. I'm good with that. Cool. Everyone let us know if there's a, a very different suggestion of what we should do with that time. But that sounds good to me. Uh, okay. Cause I really want to watch this crisis, crisis on infinite earth. Yeah, I don't know if you saw fun. In the trailer, freaking Batman Beyond is there. No, no, I was going to ask you, like, oh, shit. They're, uh, like, Crisis was way before that concept. So yeah. clearly they're fucking with, like, who the oh, Crisis definitely. characters can be. Well, dude, have you read Crisis on Infinite Earths? Yeah. It is a shit ton of characters that I had trouble placing. Oh, no, it's it's meant to be exactly that. I think historically they were just trying to combine everything so that they could, you know, bury it. But... <laughs> Because it, it got so, too unwieldy, right? That was the problem. I know. So I, know. I get it. But like, they're not just sticking to the script. Like, yeah, they're going to bring in fucking Terry McGinnis. I love it. Yeah, I am. And he slides am in with excited. style too. Yeah. Yeah. Trailer looked fantastic. I'm into it. All right. Well, that's all I have. So next week, next episode that you guys get will be our review of Superman Man of Tomorrow. If what we say here in this episode holds true. If it's not Superman Man of Tomorrow, please assume mm-hmm. that um, we noticed the downloads drop immediately and that everything on Patreon vanished immediately as well. And then we'll be like, clearly that was a misstep. If it was that drastic, I would just be like, screw everyone. <laughs> or there's just a, and, a swell of feedback saying, please, dear God, no. And then we would do the review. And then every week I would just post that same review. Yeah. Over and over yeah. and over The only again. difference will be the the clip of you laughing for 15 seconds at the beginning of it. Yeah. He will always be the man of tomorrow. Yeah. So choose your actions very carefully. You're eventually going to run out of laughs, too. <laughs> Listeners. Like, those are limited. And, like, you know, by well, episode. I have plenty of cries, though. I know. But <laughs> that's a good point. Add all the cries <laughs> in. So by episode, like, 45, it'll just be you sitting on a whoopee cushion to open the episode. Yeah. To be fair, it's already pretty close to that anyway. Yeah. By episode 50, you won't know if it's actually a whoopee cushion. <clears throat> It'll never be. That's the secret. That's going to be it, I think. <sighs> That's my secret, Captain. Mm-hmm. I'm, actually I'm always flatulent. <laughs> I'm actually going to be curious about how many people know that term. Because <laughs> I feel like there's going to be some younger people like, what the fuck are you just talking about right now? <laughs> uh, flatulent? No, the whoopee cushion. Oh, whoopee cushion. I think that well, I still that's probably what will clue some people in if they have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'd probably just, you know, if I couldn't muster a toot, I'd probably <laughs> just download an app or something. Yeah. 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 That was one of the first apps that came out, I think. It was that lighter trick thing. Yeah. And and just being able to hit a button and, and make someone sound like they farted. Because, yeah. yeah, that's immediately what we did. Also, there was porn. Basically, the first thing that humans do with any new technology is stupid trick, fart joke, and boobs. Mm-hmm. That's that's just, we are what we are. I mean, I'm just happy to see that we have our priorities in, in check. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like if you wrote the book of how evolution worked, there are all these amazing, like... <laughs> Uh, uh I, we we've made so many discoveries. I mean, <laughs> the Bronze Age and shit, and then you get to us, 
And in certain ways, it's it's fantastic. And like the you know the rise of AI, for instance, uh, might kill us all, obviously, but like might also just be this grand, amazing thing that helps so much. And I don't know, dude. I don't know. It, as soon as we got the chance, though. No, oh, yeah. What else? Happened? Every dude, I, Mike Judge doesn't get nearly enough credit because Idiocracy was pretty damn close. Oh yeah, no, it's it's uh, clairvoyant. It was like yeah, it was, it was a little off in the execution, but. I did enjoy the execution mostly. Oh, I did too. I, and my, one of my favorite things now about that movie is that everyone's wearing Crocs just because they found some upstart company with dumb looking shoes. And they were like, this will be funny. Everyone's going to be wearing this shitty looking shoe. And Here no one even are. knew what Crocs were. And it's like no one even knew. Like for years, all these people are buying Crocs. It's, it's an explosion. I have tried on a pair of Crocs. And have you? Uh, no. I recommend doing it someday just to either validate my point or uh, invalidate my point. But I fucking hate them. With every ounce of my feet's being, I hate them. Yeah, I just looked at them and was like, ah, that's not going to be comfortable for me. There's no way. I, I, My objection's always been that like it, it's it got a texture that it, it's porous. I don't like that. I kind of like no. choose to not be porous. But it also has a texture that makes you think it's going to be comfortable, but then you get there and it's actually more rigid than you think. Mm -hmm. And I typically just don't like shoes in general. They don't have a back to them. That's just a me yep. thing. Of course, all oh, this is a me thing because clearly the world likes Crocs, but like, I just don't like the, it, like it, even if I flip that little flippy thing to the back, if some shit pops off, my shoes are falling off and I'm falling down. Mm -hmm. And I have a five-year-old shit might pop off. I just might need to chase something. I also have a two-year-old dog. I just might need to chase something. I was about to say the five-year-old is not the one you need to worry about. That is about actually here. true. It, yeah. it definitely is the two-year-old dog. <laughs> I was like, you, you, like, we started our conversation today with you explaining to me that a beloved cookie monster chair has been ravished. It has. It has. By the jowls of this two-year-old dog. It has. The only thing I'm very proud of is that she hasn't <sighs> actually eaten anything. She just chews up and spits it out. So thank Christ for that one. Not ravished. Ravaged. Yeah. That's, that one's important. <sighs> far as ingestion goes yes well she might have ravished it before if she did it was uh, something she could uh, pass and deal with safely without some kind of vet visit i'll take that anyway uh let's go get some burgers man yep let's do it and as for you guys until next time keep some dc on your screen hey thanks for listening to dc on screen our theme song is by Jason Goss and Michael Shackelford of Galactic Engineers. The incidental music is by Michael Shackelford and Kevin McLeod. You can rate the show on Spotify or rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Doing that really helps push our show to new listeners, so your help would be much appreciated. You can also contact the show at DC on Screen on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or email us at dconscreen at gmail.com. To become a patron and get ad-free episodes and exclusive content, go to patreon.com slash dconscreen. Your reviews and feedback may end up on a future episode of DC On Screen. DC On Screen is a production of Maladjusted.tv in association with Stranded Panda. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever damn platform you use.